and welcome to this tutorial. I'm going to be showing you uh, another composite using the windmill. Uh, I'm just going to uh, go through a, a few ways on how we can cut it out. On the last video uh, I did where I put the windmill into a landscape, uh, I showed you, I believe, the best method to cut, cut the windmill out. And that's using focus area. Because what that does is it, it's going to select the pixels that are in focus and leave out the background which is the the clouds as you can see there are three options I'll, I'll just run through them uh, and tell you why I don't use them so color range we can see there that it's it's the the, the pinky uh, sort of reddish color that means it's selected uh, the sky and as you can see we've got a we have got a white windmill when it's going to be choosing the sky, as we've got the, the the clicker there to actually sample the colours, you can see there it's it's because the the windmill's white and the clouds are white. It's going to select the windmill as well, and we don't want that. So if I press minus to to minus that colour again, I'm going to lose some of the sky as well. So that's it. That's why I don't tend to use the colour selection for this project because it's all right on the top where it's black. There's a definite colour change. There's a, you know, Photoshop knows between obviously a darker colour and the sky. But when it comes to the windmill itself, I'm going to have problems. Especially when I try to select the windmill and not the clouds, because it's, as you can see, it's just it's it's getting confused. And even if you can play around with the fuzziness and get it somewhere like. It, it, you're still going to run into problems in between the sails. So if I go to select and press subject, now this does quite a good selection, and what it does is it, it is basically as it says, it's it's select subject. So Photoshop looks at the picture and thinks, right, that's your main subject, the windmill. I'm going to select it, which has done a pretty good job. If I press Q, you can see the mask. And it's done a good job, but like I, always with this, it's it's not selected in between the sails, so we'd have to individually go in there, and and also here, and a bit of here where it's selected the uh, the clouds. So that's that's not bad, but like I say, I think focus area does a better job and a, a more manageable job because we can now edit uh, the selection within the within the tool itself without having to uh, sort of commit to it. So just press minus as before. I'll just rush, rush through this. see around these bits we've got a little bit of a halo but we can clean that up later. Right I'm happy with that. So again we'll look at the mask. White's selected and black's not so what we need to do is just get rid of everything that's not windmill. So to view the mask just press alt and and the mask itself or it may be command on a Mac and then just click your color version to get back to the original screen 
So that's done a pretty good job. We'll just get rid of hit and delete. Alt D, Control D to get rid of the selection. Now we want to paint back in <coughs> some of the areas it's missed. So make sure your mask's selected and get a brush and you want to be painting uh, white. So make sure you're painting white because remember white reveals and black hides. So we just need to paint back in the bits that Photoshop have just taken out. Thinking it was uh, the clouds because of the uh, contrasting colours between the two backgrounds. Sure your layers the color layer selected oh we've got a bit there that we've missed there we go right select the layer and just select that now you want shift delete that brings up the fill menu and you want content aware from the drop down menu and press OK. <coughs> That's done a pretty good job. Actually, I'll just do that again. Because I'll bring my selection up to meet the bottom of the windmill. There, that's better. Right, same again. Shift, delete, and then just fill that. And then Control D to get rid of it. It's not done a bad job. I'm just going to, because I'm a bit of a perfectionist, I just want to uh, select this wire and make sure it comes all the way down. Make sure it's on full opacity. When you're using content aware it is actually cloning certain bits of the image so you just got to make sure you get no obvious repeat patterns because then it looks obvious what you've done so here look it's obviously used a bit of the uh, bit of that area where the pipe where the i think that's a lightning cable actually some sort of lightning earthing cable so just make sure you get rid of it and just keep the pattern down here uh, random it's not done a bad job I mean in the picture it's going to be in the distance anyway so you're not going to see any minor details that's going to disrupt the picture I'll just get rid of that right that's done what I am going to do as well is I'm going to apply the layer mask so I've applied it now so that that is basically what we've got and I'm going to select it and I'm just going to go to select modify and then contract and I want to contract it by one pixel and I'll tell you why remember when I said the halo earlier so what I've done is I've brought the selection in by a pixel just to leave the halo on the outside of the selection so then what I can do now is control shift I and that inverts the selection now and then I delete what's on the outside so I've deleted basically that halo it's now gone so I've got I've selected it inverted it so it's, it's deleted everything on the outside of that selection which was one pixel which was the halo so now I'll crop that And that's ready to go into the picture. 
our nice lake scene. So I'm going to prepare the lake scene and come back to the windmill. So there's my lake now, it's that one I think. Yeah, it's that one. That's the lake scene. So we've got some nice, uh, nice foreground detail and swans and... Now when I took this I didn't realise I had a train in the picture. Which isn't very good. That's where my windmill's going to go. My windmill's going to go about here. So I need to get rid of the train, really. Now, that's the reason for the other picture. Now, you're probably saying, why don't you just use this picture? And I could use it. But for some reason, I just like that one. I think it, it the composition's a little bit stronger. This is a bit zoomed out, a little bit raised. It was handheld. This little twig here isn't as prominent as the one there. It seems to look part of the image, whereas that looks like a mistake. Uh, I don't know. I just like that one. So, but just I'll, I'll show you how to get rid of the train really easily because, as you can see on this image, there is no train. So, a real handy way of getting rid of the train would be to use a bit of this picture on the other one, which is what we're going to do. So, we'll do that first. So we'll just grab that, use the move tool, and literally drag that picture onto that one. And we can close that because we don't need that anymore because we've already got it. It's doubled it up. So it's, we've got our background layer, the layer that we want to use, and then we've got the non-train layer on top. So to marry those up, just put your opacity down so you can see roughly where where you are and try and try and marry up the picture as best you can using the uh, trees and foliage around where you're going to be doing your edit which is around this part here that looks about right, it's not too far off. Right, so what we want to do now is put that to full opacity, but we want to mask it, we don't want to see it. So we've made a mask now by pressing this button down here, and we want to invert the colour, so turn it to black because we don't want to see it. So we know it's lined up and we've mask, masked it all out now. So what we're going to do is paint back in the bits that we want. So use get a brush tool and we've got white selected. And just paint in. Or paint out which one you prefer, the train. Now this is a bit of artistic license really because obviously the it didn't line up perfectly. Actually, I'll put a bit of uh, fade on there, feather, sorry, just to make sure the edges are not so harsh. And you, lit you are literally painting, you, you, you know, you cre you, you, you're creating, you're being artistic, because you've got to get it looking realistic. And if you just paint straight over the top, it'll be blocky and you'll not, you've got to do it with a bit of finesse. You know, this is what I enjoy about digital art because a lot of it does come from actual painting. You know, it's it's you got to look at the trees behind, look at how they're created, look at every single little branch, and making sure that making sure that they're realistic. You know, it's it's it, if something starts to look odd, it it. it plays on the eye and people will notice. That doesn't look bad actually. That doesn't look bad at all. Let's go get rid of whatever that is. That's the beginning ah, so that that there is the end of the tree. Ah you see that that's the problem we're gonna have. You see this? So I can get rid of the end of the train, but this rush is out of line. 
The others are not too bad, but this one's out of line, so I've got to paint him, get rid of him. Just be careful, because there I'm painting back in at the beginning of the trailer. Uh, because I don't need white, so just be very careful. Yeah, very careful. Right, small brush. I'll zoom in for this. Right, I'll leave that as it is. That's a bit of a problem. We'll, uh, I'll come back to that once I've uh, flattened the flatten the layer. So I've got the same problem here. Look, this rush isn't lined up. So the one underneath is coming through and making this one look weird. So we'll just get rid of that. So we've got a bit of the train there, but I can get rid of that later. That's no problem. And the same there. So that's not too bad. The train's gone. Like I say, from a distance, nobody's going to know the difference, but at least you know the train has gone. So what we'll do is we'll apply that, apply layer mask, and flatten layer. Flatten image. So all we've got to deal with now is that little bit there and this here, which is e easy to get rid of. So we'll just use a clone stamp. We want to use something from over here. Uh, put the opacity down a little bit. Flow just a tad. And then just paint away those areas. And as if like magic, it's gone. There we are. No more train. Train is gone. So now I'm actually going to get rid of the swans because I don't know. I think it just spoils the image. Swans, they're just not doing anything for the photo. I want the main event to be the windmill and the composition, not really the wildlife. So I'll just get rid of him or her while he's feeding. Come on, right, we've got. That's not too bad. No, it's not noticeable. That's ready to put our windmill into the picture. So again, use the move tool, V on the keyboard, and just drag him in. We don't want that anymore. So again, size matters, otherwise it would look unrealistic. So we've got to try and get it as looking at the trees and how a person would look to the trees and try and determine the best size for the windmill. As well when I'm doing pictures like this I like to take out anything that looks modern. <clears throat> so if there was a car obviously I got rid of the train if there's a plane in the sky or anything like that you know I get rid of it because we know now that obviously windmills are obsolete and back in the day they didn't have real nice cameras to take pictures of these beautiful windmills and things like that so when you're creating a picture like this not only is it just a nice photograph but you you know you, you could be creating something that hasn't been how can i put it you're creating a photo of what could have been back in the day and that's what i like to do i like to show history but with modern technology so these pictures these photos I want them to be timeless you know I want it to be I want it to look as though it was taken back in the day with modern equipment so I don't want anything futuristic or modern in the picture to make it look like it was taken 
in this era. I want it to look like it was taken back then. So that's why I like to take out everything that's uh, distracting in, in in that sense. So we've plonked down the little one, but I'm quite happy with the size to tree ratio. Uh, the light is, I'm not sure where the light was on the day to be honest, I think the sun was over to the right somewhere, but we have got this nice sort of crack in the clouds where light is beaming through. But it is a very dull picture. There's no real uh, glaring sunlight that's cast in strong shadows. And the water's quite ripply, so we haven't got any shadow, strong shadows cast down from the trees, which makes this a little easier. Uh, we have got some dark tone from this tree here, but this is a quite a light windmill, so I will show you a, a little, a quick method on how we can get some uh, water reflection. If you, but on this one, I'm going to leave it out because it, it, I think, I think we can get away with it on this picture. So we've got the windmill. What we just need to, we've got some rushes that are going underneath it. We need to get back those rushes really, so it, it looks like it's going to be part of the picture. So we'll create another mask. I'll draw uh, painting tool, brush tool, and again using black. Just go over. Don't w worry about making it neat. Just go over the the rush itself. start being a bit more neater. So paint white now because we want to hide. Well, no, I want to paint back in. We're painting back in. But it's always easier to do it this way because you know your boundaries now. This is where a tablet comes in handy when you actually paint him. about the bottom a bit because obviously it's just got a straight edge there and it just feels a bit awkward so we'll paint black on the bottom and just try and get an idea of what's what it's sat on As you can see my windmill, the flat edge of the windmill is a little bit high up. <coughs> Could have only been brought down a couple more mil in relation to the picture, but that's not nothing to worry about. Because what we could do, I'm going to apply this mask now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to literally draw on, I'm going to create a new layer. And then go to my trusty grass brushes. 
these gra it's, I'll, sh I'll do another tutorial on how to create grass but it comes in really handy for jobs such as this now it use, this brush uses both the foreground and background colour it mixes them up so you get different strands of grass in different shades of green and brown or whichever colours you choose now for this what I suggest you do is choose the colours that are in the picture so for the foreground I'm going to choose that green and for the background I'm going to choose this kind of yellowy colour just so it'll look part of the picture and then because this layer is above the windmill it's going to paint above it so I've got my opacity, yeah that's fine so just what what we're, aim, what we're trying to achieve here is to get rid of this hard edge at the bottom of the windmill so just paint over it until it disappears right. so that looks part of the picture now it looks like it's been there for years and years so what now? What we'll do is we'll flatten it to one comp. So that means it will just flatten everything below it and then create a picture on its own at the top. Now we've got our layer comp is we'll do a camera raw filter on it. So it's, it's, it's quite a, a dull day really. So I don't really want to introduce any warmth. If we introduce warmth to this picture, it would just look odd because uh, it, it wouldn't suit the sky uh, we could probably add a little bit of magenta just to give it a bit of I call it polishing just polishes the picture and makes it look a little bit special I'm not sure why it does but it just it, to me it does so about 10 magenta depending on the picture you can get away with adding a little bit more on some other pictures especially if there's like sunsets or anything else where it's already got magentas in there you just add a little bit more to give it a, a special pop. Uh, contrast, I tend to put contrast on the curves, which I'll show you later on, and then I dial it down using this contrast here. Exposure's pretty good. It's a, probably a little bit on the dark side, but I'm just going to boost the shadows just to bring some detail back along here. Highlights, bring those down to bring some cloud contrast back. You just notice with the cloud, it just affects the clouds really. And you just get some nice detail around this fluffy edge here. Uh, whites, I'll just have a look at those before we blow out, which is there, so that's fine. Blacks, that's okay. Bring the clarity up, make it a little bit sharper in areas. Dehazes, there's not much really needs. Dehazes if you get kind of a fine mist and it just makes everything look a bit soft. You can bring the uh, dehaze just to take that haze away and make it sharper. Uh, we've got a bit of vibrance, so I'll bring that up a little bit. A little bit on the saturation. I'm just going to experiment here a little bit just to darken the foreground just a little bit and the curves so highlights I've got to be careful I'll put the highlight blow out on so where it's red there it's just gonna show it's pure white in that area there's no detail so we've got to be careful I'll probably dial it down on the uh, whites uh, slider and we've got overall light which is here again take it to extremes you know experiment and the darks not too much shadows There we are. 
So now, once I've done the curves, I go back here <coughs> and just dial down the whites until that red disappears. So we've done the basic, we've done curves, sharpness. So we'll zoom in to 100%. Now obviously this came from a different picture, so the sharpness is going to be different between the two. So we can't over sharpen. Got to be really careful. That's not too bad. And we don't want to sharpen the sky, so bring that slider across until the sky is black. We've got a bit of noise in the sky, so we'll just get rid of can't get rid of all of it, we can get rid of some of it. That's not too bad. Not bad at all. Uh, split toning, we don't need to do any of that. Uh, lens correction, distortion haven't really got any problems there. We've got no problems with chromatic aberration. If you're not sure what that is, sometimes between, sometimes you get it on branches or the edge of buildings where you'll, you'll get this real bright orange, uh, sort of magenta line or a green line. And it's to do with the contrasting colors. I've never really understood it myself, but it's really annoying sometimes. Many times I've had to literally draw around a whole building and then cut it out, and, and like we did with the halo of the uh, windmill, you you just kind of kind of come in one pixel or two pixels, leaving the halo behind and cutting it out completely. Uh, but yeah, Photoshop's got a great way of getting rid of it anyway. Uh, it just defringes it's, uh, the whole image and gets rid of those real bright chromatic aberration. There's something to do with your lens, just creates these horrible colors in your picture but this picture seems good it seems free of all that so we're all right so I think that's it for the uh, raw conversion so already now we've got a, a pretty decent shot a pretty decent picture I'll tell you what we'll do instead of making a color picture we'll make a black and white one the Nick collection has got this I, I, I think it's amazing there's nothing comes close uh, black and white converter You've got full control over everything in this. It's it's superb. I mean, look at that. I'm not going to go for that because I want the detail of it. So we've got this nice sepia tone going on, giving the picture a bit of age. That's quite nice, really nice. So we'll just boost the contrast a little bit. Amplify the blacks. Bring the highlights up a little bit. Not too much. There. So there you have it, one windmill at the lake. Right, I was going to show you how to get a bit of a reflection in the water using the windmill. I'll just show you that briefly. I'll just take the two pictures off. So we've got the windmill. Make a copy of it first. So you've got two windmills stacked on top of one another. Drag that down. And then just put that in the water somewhere. Now you will notice that it's mirrored, so what we want to do is drag it the other way. And we we'll want to select there. Transform. Flip vertically. Right, that's what I do. So we want to flip vertically. So it's reflecting the right way. So we've got it reflecting basically in the water there.
but it doesn't look real. So create a mask and gradient tool and then we want black to white. Now remember black hides white reveals. So we want the bottom half of this windmill hidden and we want the top half shown like that. Now like I say it's not great for this type of picture but we've got the windmill in the water now and it's faded. So to make it look a bit more realistic we can go to uh, filter, blur, Gaussian blur and just blur it a little bit. What we'll do is we'll go to liquify and then with this brush here we can create ripples or what look like ripples in so I'm just dragging basically I'm going from left to right using the push pick and it's just pushing the pixels in the direction so you press OK so you get that kind of effect and then we can go down the uh, blending modes to see which one best suits the picture that's pretty good that's not bad actually overlay so as you can see now we've got the uh, windmill it looks fairly good actually fairly reflected in the water there but you can play around with it and get it looking a lot better so anyway we didn't do that for that <coughs> but we've got the pinnace picture i hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial um yeah please subscribe hit the like button uh, and i'll catch you in the next video thank you